Shabbat Shalom, Yashorel, a word. This day on this Shabbat, I'm going to give to you the word that the Lord gave to me. And I pray in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach that the Spirit speak through me as this word goes forth. For all who have ears, let them hear. As we honor and glorify the Most High, as we do it in spirit and truth, let it be received as our prayer and our praise unto thee, Father, that we speak truth to each other as we honor and glorify you this day and forevermore. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen. The word that the Lord gave to me, beloved, was with a kiss, with a kiss. Yes, beloved, with a kiss. We see Judas betray Yeshua in the garden of Sidron. He does it with a kiss. We know about kisses that are carnal, but there was another kind of kiss, a kiss that spoke of honor, a kiss that spoke of respect. We see in scripture where we are told to give a sign of deep respect, honor, and brotherly love, sisterly love in the book of Luke, in the book of Romans 16, 16, 1 Corinthians 16, 20, 2 Corinthians 13, 12, 1 Thessalonians 5, 26, 1 Peter 5, 14. And for a student who had great respect for his teacher, a kiss fell well within the healthy expression of honor. We are in a society right now, beloved, that wants to betray us with a kiss. Yes, yes, and we, we need that spirit of discernment, that revelation knowledge, that revelation wisdom to understand that Everybody that dwells in your midst does not always have your best interest at heart. You see, Yeshua HaMashiach knows it well. In the book of John, chapter 15, verse 20, he said, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they've kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And you see, a lot of times persecution does not always come in the guise of just anger, okay? It can also come in the guise of a friend who is not a friend. Yeshua HaMashiach had 12 disciples, but one of them had the devil in him. As a matter of fact, when we look at the book of John, chapter 13, verse 12, 10 to 11, Yeshua said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean and you are clean, but not every one of you. For he who had, was to betray him that was why he said, not all of you are clean. I'm going to say that again. Jesus said unto him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That is why he said, not all of you are clean. There are many who truly do not have the spirit within them, although they move about amongst the people of the Most High. When we look at the character of Judas Iscariot, Judas was carrying the money bag. He was the treasurer. He kept the accounts. But Judas was a thief. He had been a thief before, and he was still a thief even when he was amongst Yeshua HaMashiach, hearing all of that glorious word that he heard, he was still a thief. 
he had not been cleansed by the word of the most high. All of that spiritual anointing around him, everybody that appears to be your friend is not your friend. And he betrayed him with a kiss. You see, even now, there are people who work under governments like Judas worked along with the Pharisees and the chief priests to betray Yeshua. He worked with those that appeared to have the best interest of Yasharel at heart, when in actuality, they had their own interests at heart. And in order to get close, to finish playing out his act, he came up and he kissed him to feign regard, concern for him. You see, there are those among us who are working under the so-called chief priest, the powers that be, the Pharisees, if you will. And they betray you with a kiss. You see, when he met him in that garden, he didn't come along when he kissed him. He told them, the one I kiss, that's the one you take. Right now, if certain people won't go along with certain things, you have that spirit of Judas Iscariot coming in as though they care and they're honoring you with a kiss. That kiss could be a jab, that kiss of I care. But you see, when you look at who was with Judas Iscariot in that garden, mm, who was with him in that garden, he brought Roman soldiers they had, and he, he had lanterns and weapons. They were ready to do damage. But the presentation was with a kiss. Okay, you've got situations out here. You got people close to you, beloved. Because you see, they can't betray you if they don't get close to you. And they do it in the guise of compassion and honor, like Judas Iscariot. Okay, like Judas Iscariot. But in reality, they don't mean you any good. When you look at what they gave Judas, it was 30 pieces of silver. You have people right now that are betraying Yah's anointed for money. And when you look at the 30 pieces of silver that they gave Judas Iscariot, actually that is the amount that they would give for a slave who was slain beloved. Let's read what I'm talking about in the book of Exodus chapter 21 verse 32. If the ox shall push a manservant or a maidservant, he shall give unto thy master, their master 30 shekels of silver and the ox shall be stoned. Well, let's take that for a minute. If the ox shall push a manservant or a maidservant, he shall give unto their master 30 shekels of silver. Here we have Judas, the student who never honored the teacher, putting himself in the position of the master. And he lowered the value of Yeshua to a slave or a servant for 30 pieces of silver. If the ox push, meaning gores, when they say push, and I'm reading from the King James ver version, so I'm going to use the word gores. If the ox shall gore a maidservant or a manservant, he shall give unto their master 30 shekels of silver, 30 pieces of silver to the slave's master. Judas repositioned himself. He used his love 
to attempt to get above Yeshua to betray him for 30 pieces of silver. But you see, he played two roles in reality. He did not, he put himself in a position of master using Yeshua as the slave symbolically, like it says in Exodus 21, verse 32. But he also was playing a position of the ox. If the ox go a male or female slave, the owner shall give his master, he's playing two roles, that of the ox. He's goring Yeshua. He's trying to bring about, he knows he's bringing about his death. And then the ox shall be stoned. In the end, Judas dies. Yes, beloved, but you see, even under some of the worst of situations, Yeshua was still fulfilling what had already been foretold, and he's using sinners. He's using those who think they're working it one way when Yahuwah has already settled it in another. Even though he devalued him, 30 pieces of silver was not a lot of money. That's the money you pay for a slave. But at the same time, we're looking at how it's set up. Once he gets this money, they come in, they're not concerned about making sure that Judas is okay. Judas realizes what he did was wrong. He's got remorse, but he can't not, he's not repentant. He's remorseful. But you see, The Pharisees, why were they so intent on going after Yeshua? Because his claims outweighed their authority. They knew if they couldn't get rid of him. His claims outweighed their authority. His deeds outraged their religious leaders. You've got leaders nowadays that they're after exaltation instead of the true spirit of the word. He was a threat to their religious system. Yeah, he turned it on his ear. The people with whom he is socialized outraged their rulers because he socialized with sinners. And he had a lack of respect for their traditions because these were the traditions of men and not the laws, customs, commands, and statutes of the Most High. When Yahuwah wants to get something done, he will use whomever he will. And he will show the nature of the people through one. What do you mean? If Yeshua could have a Judas Iscariot among him, sitting in one of the highest offices. He was one of the 12 original disciples. There are also people who can sit in high office, but have a devil in them. Just because you've got people walking around feigning to care about you does not mean that that's their true intent. You've got people worldwide feigning with a kid to care about you. But you see, if you look closer, they're bringing soldiers and officers to enforce the true intent. How much can you truly care about somebody? Although your presentation to get close is with a kiss, a kiss being concern, care, honor, respect, or is it? When you look at the whole picture. If they don't agree with the ideology set before them by this so-called power system, you're ready to take them by force because you care. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Yahuwah intent to get that word out, beloved. Yahuwah intent to bring about his rule, his 
authority, his true word. He will use whomever he will. You have people right now, beloved, that uh, they go against females. They feel as though females shouldn't speak the word of the most high. The Lord will make a rock cry out, but he won't use a female. Mm. You know, when you look in the book of Daniel, chapter four, Nebuchadnezzar wrote chapter four in the book of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, who was not of the house of Yashima, when the Lord wants to make a point as to who is Lord of Lord, King of King, he will use whom he will. He shows you that everybody that's in a place of honor is not honorable. And a lot of them will sell out and sell out the king of kings to get a mere pittance, which is basically money. Many of us beloved, we have to be careful and we have to ask the Lord to bless us that we can see with our spiritual eyes. The Judas among us. Yes, because you have to understand that some of us are clean through his word, but others are not. Okay. When we look at the book of John, chapter 13, verses 10 through 11, when we get to verse 11, for he knew who was to betray him. That is why he said, not all of you are clean. What did he mean through that word? They had not all absorbed that word. But we have people among us. When you look at the fact that he was a thief. Who? Judas Iscariot. There are those among us who are still of their original nature, although they feign to be of the most high. But they carry that original nature and they let it guide them to their own destructions, beloved. Many of us, when the spirit speaks to us, do not allow the voice of flesh to cause you to question what the spirit is telling you. When he's speaking to you, you have to understand that he's not necessarily speaking to everyone those same said words that you hear. With a kiss. Everybody that says they're your friend is not your friend. Everybody that claims they have your best interests at heart does not. We in the system right now, it says it has your best interest at heart. These same set people, brutalized, murdered, imprisoned people without mercy, suddenly with a kiss. They want to give you something with a kiss. And you have to ask for discernment, beloved, so that you understand. And you watch how they maneuver. Just like Judas, they come with soldiers and weapons and lanterns and staves, sticks ready to tear your head off. Why? Hmm. The leader that came in, that pointed you out, they did it because they care, because they respect you, because they honor you, if you want to believe that, beloved. But what I would say to you is let the most high open thine eyes that you see everybody that was among those 12. When you look at the 12 disciples, you can look at the 12 tribes everybody is not have the best interest at heart of our leader of the world 
that guides and leads us. No, beloved, no, they do not. But you see, his word, Yeshua HaMashiach, mm -hmm. when we look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 33, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. The word of the Most High shall reign over us forever. So if you know his word, his truth, that spirit of truth will testify to your spirit, leading you into all truth. And that kiss that the Judas Iscariots are bringing, and they, they're so intent to get to you. I find it funny. They're pulling out all the stops, trying to get in the garden to tell the people of Yeshua that those people who follow Yahuwah's word, that being Yeshua, Hamashiach, trying to get us to believe that it is in our best interest. Yes, 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 with a kiss. Here comes the thief. You know, if you got a thief, then you got a liar. Hmm. Okay, when we look at Psalm 2, Verse two, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Let's go over that again. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. We know that's true. And against his anointed. Saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. But you see, he's opened our eyes, beloved. Try as they may, that foolish nation trying to come in with a kiss, the kiss of caring, the kiss of honor, the kiss of respect. Really? If you look not too far behind them, you see the soldiers, you see the weapons intent on being used. It's hard to see the care when you see the intent to do harm, but it all began with a kiss. Yes, a kiss. Right now, they're turning up the volume, trying to make you believe like Judas Iscariot coming in. They want you to put your eyes on the kiss first so that they can get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. He put it on me with a kiss, with a kiss. Right now, there is a day it's going on all over the world, this kiss. They want to give you a kiss. But you have to look beyond the Judas Iscariots that are speaking for them and see the soldiers and the weapons and the clubs and the anger, the intent. And the focus of who they are trying to kiss. And the faces of the ones who want to give the kiss because they're very similar, beloved. But he's opened our eyes, so they're using all manner of means. They want to shut it down in order to stop this spread of the word, the word being his people, the spirit of Yasharev. But it's not going to stop. When they come at you with a kiss, You might want to back up, take a look behind them. Mm. Because that spirit of discernment, that revelation knowledge is right there, okay? There's people that have so much honor and respect for you. Mm. There's people like the spirit of Judas that was a thief. Mm. Do we know any people that stole from other people? Mm. Beloved. It's a word, a word that 
the most I put on my spirit. And they try to do it with a kiss. A word, beloved. Shalom.